Welcome back to the Bluegrass on this beautiful February afternoon. Today I am introducing Aria, <laughs> a mid-adolescent uh, Doberman from uh, Philadelphia. She actually belongs to a fellow from Greece, first uh, fellow from Greece I've ever met. Uh, so that was very interesting. But uh, Aria is here for a little bit of black lab therapy, and so we're going to track her progress through the system. Uh, but right now, I mean, this is basically what we get, just a whole bunch of fidgeting. And uh, so you know what I think. I think that uh, exercise and uh, fidgeting share an inverse relationship, right? So I'm just going to let her go, and we're going to go out in the field, and uh, we're going to do a little bit of learning by doing, right? And uh, uh, jump right into some black lab therapy. Okay, guys, very nice dogs. All right, let's see if we can get this Doberman to go out there with us, guys. Oh, my gosh. Come on. Come on, Arya. Oh, my gosh. Very smart dog. Now, you'll notice... Aria is kind of like jumping up on me and you know she's not trying to be rude here guys she just is overwhelmed you know what we see all the time with dogs like this they grow up in urban envir environments or high population density environments uh, even in the suburbs you know is that like the dogs have just not got a chance to really uh, explore all of the nuances of social activity you know, I mean, think about how well socialized you would be if your whole life you were only allowed to go this far away from your mom when you were out in public, okay? And so most dogs, you know, by the time they're in the mid-adolescent phase, they just haven't had a chance to, like, learn how to be normal citizens, you know? So, like, when I was a kid, this right here, we would have just immediately put that over in the rude category, and this dog would have been in trouble. And like what I learned over the course of time is that, hey, that dog's not trying to give me a hard time. You know, if we come out here and she doesn't want to come back to me, if she's afraid to go in the building, if she's uh, afraid to get in the truck, uh, if she doesn't want to walk on the leash, uh, you know, she's not trying to give me a hard time. Guys, she just doesn't know, you know, how to uh, be part of a cooperative, uh, you know, uh, relationship with a human being, right? Because her whole life has been one of quiet desperation. So but when I first get a dog like that here, okay, dogs, come on. <laughs> You know, I want her to understand that uh, I'm a cool dude, you know. I just want to run around and I want to have a good time. And, like, there's no way for me to tell, the, tell her that with words, okay. So I use what I call the Missouri rule. Uh, you know, I treat her like she's from Missouri. I show her, right. And that's what we're doing here. Is I just, you know, brought Aria out here in this uh, field. And if she jumps on me some, if she runs into me some, if she doesn't want to come back, you know, that's okay. I'm just going to let her experiment because she has a lifetime of experimenting to make up for. You know, she just hasn't had a chance to like to get out in the world and see what the world has to offer. So when a dog first comes here for training, I try not to act like I'm some kind of super important person and I've got a ton of stuff that the dog needs to know. No, I'm really kind of a Montessori director, right? I'm just going to put the dog in situations where she can learn lessons by doing. Okay, and uh, luckily for me, I have a big group of mentor dogs, and I have a lot of nice people that come down here that'll help me, you know. And so for the first maybe whole week or 10 days, this dog's here, and this is all we're going to do. We're just going to go for hikes. We're going to walk around. I'm going to let her play with the other dogs, and I'm going to train the other dogs. And what's going to happen is Aria is going to see how those dogs look at me and look up to me and follow with me and engage in activities in a cooperative manner with me. And she's going to go, well, hey, look, that's, that looks awesome. Can I get in on that? And then gradually I'm going to start to educate her as to how to best navigate, uh, you know, a relatively complicated human world, you know. And uh, so we'll get her going out here, and then uh, as her training progresses, uh, we'll start to like, uh, you know, re uh, like reintroduce her to suburban and urban environments. So I'll get her out here, and you know what I'm always saying, like nature's the the best classroom, right? That's just to let a dog learn how to be a dog. That's to let a dog get out and 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 and, and stretch their limbs and run around, have a good time, learn how to have impulse control, learn how to have. Uh, a good attention span, learn how to have good proprioception, right? And learn how to look at me as somebody that that is doing fun stuff, right? So that way, when I go back to taking her to the suburbs, when I go back to taking her into urban environments, like she's like, okay, well, I'm just gonna look at Stoney and see what Stoney's doing. And, uh, you know, kind of take my lead from him because he always ends up doing the fun stuff. And so if we get stuck in a boring city environment for a while, I'm gonna try my best to make it exciting for her, to make it fun for her, okay? But she's gonna learn that like if, if uh, we go into that kind of situation, it's just not gonna be super fun. But at some point during that day, I'll make it fun, 
Okay, and that's all I'm trying to do with the dogs. I'm trying to make the dog understand that just tagging along with me and taking her cues from me emotionally leads to good results. Come on, Aria. Come on, dogs. So we just kind of walk around, let her do stuff. She's a very good dog. Very good dog. Very good dog. Oh my gosh. Now, even when she's jumping on me like this, even, you know, like you notice I'm still telling her she's a good dog. Okay. I have to go through that phase where I'm telling her she's a good dog for this kind of behavior because from her perspective, okay, all she's trying to do is make social overtures to me. She's just trying to interact with me in the best way that she knows how. And, you know, like she's kind of lived a life where, uh, unfortunately, uh, she fell into a negative attention-seeking pattern where, like, she would kind of like when she was being good, she would get ignored a little bit. Not on purpose, it's just what happens, right? Uh, and then when she would do something a little bit aggravating, then she would get more attention. You know, well, if I put you in a situation where when you were good, nobody paid attention to you, and when you were bad, lots of people paid attention to you, how do you think you'd behave? I mean, we see that play out in the uh, public education system all the time. You have children, they're not getting a lot of attention at home. Uh, maybe they're not that good at school, you know, and they're not getting a lot of validation from their grades. And so what do they do? They choose to act out, you know, and then they get labeled and once they're labeled, uh, it's kind of tough to, 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 you know, to change people's perception of them. The same thing happens to dogs. I get people email me all the time. It's, Tony, I got this dog and, you know, it's just incorrigible. Well, I, I doubt it, you know. Uh, it's just like reacting to incentives in the environment, you know. And so my job is to change those incentives uh, by changing the environments and exposing the dog to as many situations as possible. Come on, Aria. Come on. Very good dog. Oh my gosh, you're a very good dog. Very nice. Now, every so often, you know, as I'm letting the dogs run around, I want to make myself look a little bit more interesting, so I'll start running around. Oh my gosh, Uncle Stoney's pretty fun. Oh my gosh, Uncle Stoney's pretty fun. You know, right? Just letting her know. I'm the kind of guy, oh yes, I'm the kind of guy that wants to have fun, you know? I, it's the hardest thing in the world to do with a dog, is to make them understand that obedience leads to freedom, right? Okay, obedience leads to fun, because the better the dog minds, then like the more stuff you can do with them, right? The more closely you can integrate them into your lifestyle. So that's what we're going to be working on for the next month. So be sure to check in next week, uh, and uh, maybe by next week we'll get Aria to the point where we can take her outside and do some hiking, and then we'll go do some uh, maybe some uh, urban or at least semi-urban stuff with her. See y'all next week.